Welcome everyone, in this video we will consider a very interesting integral involving the trigonometric function sine. The integral is from 0 to L and it is as follows. We have sine of n pi over L x times sine of n pi, uh, I mean m pi, m pi over l x, then you have dx. Here we know that n and m are elements of the positive integers. And also even, even, uh, maybe I should say well, maybe I should say that for our proof, it will be important. Well, will it be? Uh, no, it won't, I guess. Anyways, we will figure it out. Figure it out. We will figure it out. So we know this. And uh, and I claim that if n is equal to m, if n is not equal to m, let's say, if it, they are not equal, the integral gives zero. All the time, it gives zero. However, if they are equal... We will get L over 2. This is my claim. And this property is called the orthogonality of the sine function. And this property is not very uh, related to our video. But I wanted to name, I want to give the name of it. So that perhaps you want to do further research on this. Basically, we are only interested in evaluating this integral. For two cases, where n is equal to m and when, uh, where they are not equal. However, this is a hard integral to deal with, like this, when it is like this. So we need to make a substitution. And the substitution that would solve this problem is, and I'm just going to give it to you, but I do believe that if you were to think for maybe like 5, 10, 15 minutes, you would come up with this at some point. We will use the substitution that originates from the idea cosine of x minus y minus cosine of x plus y. This is the starting point for our substitution. Let's just expand the uh, two terms. We will have cosine of x cosine of y plus sine of x sine of y minus cosine of x cosine of y we would say minus but we have another minus up front so it is plus it is plus the first and the third terms cancel we have two sine of x sine of y here you can notice that if i choose x to be this parentheses and if i choose y to be this parentheses then uh, then we will be able to make make use of this substitution. So let's do that. Let's do that. It will be from 0 to L. And also to account for this factor of 2 up front. I will divide by uh, 2. 1 over 2. Then here we go. We have sine of instead of n pi x divided by L. I will write. So instead of the whole product, I will write this. Okay? As we just argued in the substitution part. It gives cosine of x is going to be n pi over l x minus y is going to be m pi over l x. As you can see, we can factor out common things, common factors to make it look a little bit nicer. Like this. And the second term is going to be cosine of pi over L, N plus M. We have X, DX. Cool. Here, uh, here I want to first start off with the case where N is not equal to M. If they are not equal, then let's just go ahead and take this integral. We will have 1 over 2. Now for the 
integral of cosine pi over l times n minus m times x, it will simply be, and you can check my math, it will be l over pi n minus m sine of pi over l n minus m x then a minus l over pi m plus m and this part okay this factor and this factor they are just there to account for the uh, chain rule the derivative of the inside now let's examine this let's examine what happens well if i substitute l i use the upper boundary i substituted for x here in the first term so else cancel i have pi times n minus n which is an integer so pi times an integer inside the sine gives you zero similarly for this part as well sine of pi times an integer is zero so the first evaluation gives a zero minus i'm using the lower bound when i substitute for x i immediately get sine of zero which is zero in the second term as well i get zero because sine of zero is still zero which means if n is not equal to m, regardless of their values, as long as they are not equal, we get zero for this integral. So the first part of the claim is verified. Now comes the second part, which I like more, a bit more. Now let's suppose that n equals n. How does the uh, how does the integral change then? Well, we will have 1 over 2. And then, so from 0 to L, here it will be 0, right? Because N minus M gives you 0 since they're equal. So the question becomes, what is cosine of 0? It is 1. And then a minus cosine of, we have N plus M, which is 2N or 2M. But I will choose to call it 2n. So it will become 2 pi n x over L. And then the x. Let's just take this integral. We have 1 over 2. X minus L over 2 pi n. Sine of 2 pi n x over L. And the boundaries. Did I make any mistakes let's check i said l over 2 pi n i think we nailed it yep that's what i think so let's just substitute the upper boundary we will have 1 over 2 l minus if i substitute l to this x i will have sine of 2 pi n which is simply zero so I have 0. Then minus, again, 1 over 2. I substitute the lower boundary. So 0 minus. We will have sine of 0, which is 0. So we have, we in fact have L over 2, which verifies the last part of the claim as well. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please write them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.